Howdy guys, Attorney Walter not my apologies for being extremely late, about an hour and 18 minutes late. I am super tired and I have, just for this wonderful show, drank as much caffeine as I can to stay awake throughout the process. I have been working nonstop, which is just super fun. There's a few phone calls we need to return from today and one weird text message that got reassigned from somebody from yesterday that I've got to address and catch up with, just do a claim status update. Anyways, the point is, we are going to be focusing on the June of 2023 Social Security Benefit Update. That's where we go into answering how Social Security benefits will be modified, altered, changed in the upcoming future months. However, where things are at right now in June, where things were at a couple of months ago, and how it kind of changed June, that's what we're going to be going through for retirement, Social Security Disability Insurance benefits, Supplemental Security Income benefits, widows, survivors, DAC benefits, auxiliary benefits. We're going to go through that stuff. So let's get right to it, guys. I'm super excited as I nearly fall asleep. Here we go. The Social Security Administration is on a massive hiring binge to get as many employees as they can to try and bolster their low numbers for employment. Now, it takes like two to three years to realistically train them to the point where they know what they're doing. So don't expect magic here when it comes to increasing speed times. Now, they are saying that the wait times could improve, eh, maybe, by the end of this year, okay? However, every time I ask for a forecasted wait time for a claimant to be assigned a DDS rep from the developmental unit, it gets longer. Some areas are now up to 16 months, and I've even heard that it'll be getting longer than that over the next couple of months. Basically, it just keeps creeping longer and longer. And for those of you who don't know how that works for disability benefits, when you initially file a claim, the, the local field office sends it over to DDS after, you know, a month or two. Well, actually, it's a couple months now, three or four or, you know, and then basically at that point, once they get to the DDS, it just sits there with the developmental unit. They'll send you the 3373, the 3369, supplemental pain, anxiety, seizure, yada, yada, all those. They'll send those out. But nobody really touches the claim in a, you know, directed person, a person assigned to that claim uh, sort of way until a massive amount of time has actually gone by. And that's that's tricky. Now, there are areas around the country that are much faster. Those are your low population areas. And then there are people basically uh, around, uh, there are areas around the country where it's just maximized. Like Orlando is just totally and completely overloaded. I do see you guys calling in right now. I will uh, go ahead and answer calls at the next video because this intro video is going to be your news update. And then the next video we do is the super famous, even though they're the lowest view videos, where I answer rapid fire questions from you, the callers around the country. It's actually around the world at this point, which is really cool and kind of sucks for me because then I have to know international social security law. Excellent. So with that said, let's go to the next thing. A Marilyn Harry, who is now 63 years old, hid the fact that her father passed away in the mid-1990s. As a result of it being hid, she collected her father's Social Security retirement check for another 25 years and will now be on unsupervised probation for five years and must pay back the total of $551,000 that she stole from the SSA. This is what a federal judge ordered. How she will be able to pay back half a million dollars I don't know. Maybe magic. We'll, we'll see what happens. Now, an average Social Security check around Christmas of 2022 was around $1,681. OK, so go back to Christmas when we were all like, what's going to happen with the world? Hey, what are my present, you know, present or presents going to be? Go back there and then stay there mentally for like an hour. You'll be you'll feel better. This then jumped to $1,779 due to cola inflation which is, uh, you know, that's kind of like the January time, less bubbly in the new year uh, than the Pepsi inflation. Of course, the cola inflation is just not as sugary. That's a joke. It's okay if you didn't get it. The April summer average check is now, so April, around $1,843.80. We went from 1,681 average social security check in December, and now we're at $1,834 in April. So I remember back when the average checks were around 1000 and thanks to inflation, we are likely going to see a sooner than expected $2,000 average check per month in the next three to four years as the inflation, we hope, will roll off. Now, other channels will be selling to you how amazing and super dope it is 
that basically these uh, checks might reach $2,000 average in the not too distant future. But you're not that. You're smarter than them. You are. You are smarter than them because you know that if that check quickly gets to $2,000, that means that inflation caused a COLA increase. And when there's more inflation, you actually get less money because the inflation outpaces the extra money that they give you. You're smarter than that. So when you go into the comments and you'll see some people comment, and they'll say, hey, this channel is always talking about this or that, but it should be talking about the benefit increases that we're about to get. There are no benefit increases, no bills, no laws that are on the books that are likely to pass through Congress. There's no Senate bill. There's no House bill that is likely to pass. Okay, I could do those videos. I would have 500,000 subscribers. It would be awesome, but it would also be unfortunately disingenuous, and it would also be putting it more directly a lie. We don't do that here. Next thing. Okay, people have been very disgruntled about whether or not the federal government takes money or maybe steals money or borrows money or tickles the Benjamins. I mean, you could put it in whatever phrasing you enjoy. Here's the deal. The correct phrasing for what the government does with your Social Security FICA payments is where the top hat wielding bond buddy comes out and asks for a tenor for the road. Put another way, right? Okay, so... When you pay taxes, the USA converts them to special IOU bonds, which is your money in a big account that the USA pays interest on, okay? They then sell the bonds and apply the money to your monthly checks, right? You get the money in the mail because they, they sold some bonds. Yay, life is good. The only kicker is that this Ponzi scheme, right, that we're all using for retirement is losing money now which means somewhere around 2033, 2034, the trust funds will run out and people will get around 78 to 80% of their benefits, right? So imagine your check just being less, but they're actually advertising that the check will be the same amount at 100%. You just won't get one month's check. They're saying that's how they probably will end up paying it out. So like just take December and take it off the map for your checkbook. So this is unless they decide to borrow in the future from the public to try and fix this, which is ironic because they're increased the U.S.'s ability to basically borrow funds against the American people, which, by the way, I don't know if you guys knew this, but the greatest uh, bank that the U.S. is borrowing from, there's many things, but one of the greatest ones, I should say one of the greatest ones, because there's, there's no way to have a perfect evaluation number on this, are the Social Security payments that are put in like, you know, one of the one of the greatest amounts of debt that the government takes against an entity would be the U.S. American population. OK, which sucks for you and me, which would, in fact, be the definition of, uh, you know, it, it's not. And this is the thing I don't people don't realize it's they're not stealing. The government isn't stealing your money. They're just giving themselves a preferential lending. Yeah, that's not stealing. It's a preferential lending. I know. I know. It feels good to say it that way. All right. Now, with that said, right now we are just at the government giving us this kind of low yield return on our FICA tax money that's paid in so that they can get preferential borrowing of big money to continue spending like their purse as a whole, the vacuum at the bottom of it. Okay. So, I mean, we could fix this. But every time cutting back spending comes up, they threaten Social Security benefits, which is weird because people paid for them. While green energy, more IRS agents and other fat on the bone seems to just keep getting funded. I mean, hey, you guys like to vote the way you vote. You know what I mean? I'm not pushing Democrat. I'm not pushing Republican here. I'm just saying you guys like to vote the way you vote. You could join me in the middle in the independent realm, but nothing would ever get done there. So, hey, whatever. All right. So no one ever threatens SSI benefits. Why is that? Well, it's weird because they mostly don't vote for Republicans. And you would think that they would be attacked, the benefit program, the SSI program, by Republicans. There are reasons for this, but I've already had one video today demonetized already. So we're just not going to go through them. All right, you get you get one demonetized video a day. That that's that's the rule. All right, Mike Pence is ready to discuss fixing social security benefits for a presidential 
candidacy run. Oh, wow. 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 Ryshock 4. Thank you. Thank you for the massive donation. A really, really wow. So Ryshock 4, thank you for the $40 donation. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's amazing. Amazing. Now I feel bad about starting late. You guys made me feel bad. <laughs> you guys made me feel terrible now. Oh my God. Ah. Um, all right. So again, Ryshock, that, that is just incredible. I really, I really appreciate the donation. That's amazing. Um, so Mike Pence, this whole Mike Pence situation is, uh, is weird for me. And again, I'm sorry about the hair. I don't know what, I, like, what is that? What is that? I'm not even sure. How does it get up there? Why? I, it's like, I should put a red light that blinks up there. So the planes don't hit it. There we go. Mike Pence. I don't get it. It's weird for me because the numbers don't have him really on the ticket. And the ticket doesn't usually like people hearing that they need to give up some of their retirement so that the kids with never-ending student loans can innovate instead of being crushed. And guys, just, just for your info on this thing, and I don't want to push this thing, we, the millennial group, the young people of the you know 30s and early, early, early 40s, and I guess, I don't know where it stops, the 20s, somewhere, whatever, the, the people in that age group that are going to be paying for the retirement of those who are in their 50s and 60s and 70s right now. Those peeps, they're getting crushed. Their student loans, they suck. They're way too high. And what happens is people keep voting to crush the new kids, right? The freshmen over and over and over again. So think of it this way. If you needed to pay 30 to 80% more to get a higher education, that would be required to have the jobs that the older people had without that education throughout their life, you would call that loan sharking, right? You would say it's completely illegal and you'd be looking for a fix because you'd be like, okay, we've made all these extra requirements for them to do these jobs that were already being done in the past with people without those higher education levels. And now we're mass charging much, much more expensive for these educations, you know, and now they're just on this uh, little wheel like a gerbil. That's, you know, we just we just keep poking them. We poke them. We steal a little blood. We poke them. We steal a little blood. You know, let's feed them some crap food so they chub up. All right, here we go. Now, here's the thing. Um, a lot of people have been brainwashed into thinking these kids that were young, they chose the price that they were going to pay, right? That kids chose their school and kids chose their, like, loan percentage. Okay, look, when I was 18, I had no friggin' clue how to read an academia loan agreement, a contract at that level. I had no idea how to read one of those. I don't even think I had an idea how to read it after college. I think it took a little bit of my master's. And then at that point, once I was in law school after the first year, I had it. I could do it. But I didn't have those skills until I did that other stuff. So the, the point with this is that I think kids didn't make the choice of like, you know, yes, we want that percentage with that rate, with that thing, with that loan, with that school. Yeah, they picked whatever best school they could get into. I mean, obviously that was their choice. But I think what kids were really choosing with this whole thing was that kids chose not to be a garbage disposal truck driver. Right. And not that that's a bad job. I've even said it on this channel before many times. Like I'd be totally fine doing that job. I actually don't mind heavy machinery work. Like that's totally fine. I grew up on a farm. Like I'm cool with that. But the point is people, kids, they chose not to do that job. And in order to not to do that job, you had to be basically abused by the loan system. So now I don't expect people to realize, you know, although they keep seeming to vote, to go ahead and make sure that these kids don't succeed. But, uh, you know, th these kids are going to serve a lifetime servitude to monthly payments. And you can be cool with that. You can be like, I don't want to subsidize them. But the people you should really be mad at are the politicians and the school owners that were able to change the politicians and get you to vote for them in the 80s and 90s so that these kids would become slaves to the academia loan system. Now, remember, it was so bad at one point that the federal government had to take over the student loan system. They took it over. 
They said, this is so bad, so sharky that we're going to take it over. And then some people, some people, these assholes right here, this, this, this face actually have loans from before the government took it over because we're that old. And that's what sucks. That's, that's the crap part. Now, with that said, like, if you just think, if you just think about this a little bit, you would realize that, you know, the people that you rely on to basically pay your retirement benefits are stuck in the mud while the mega companies buy each other out and keep paying people consolidated jobs less and less and less. I don't know if you know how it works, but the way it works is these giant corporations buy out the mid-sized corporations and then they buy out their big buddies and then you get this consolidate consolidated super ball corporation right and that super ball corporation then can be more efficient and also control the cost of essentially a person uh and the wages that they have to pay to that person because where else are they going to get a job there's not as much competition anymore thank you Shirley for the 199 donation thank you thank you thank you very cool so Remember, your retirement relies on the people in their 30s, 40s, and 50s. The, the people in their 30s are going to sabotage your retirement because, and they don't even realize it yet. Like, you guys think like, oh, no, no, they're going to they're gonna steal their retirement. They're going to steal. They're not going to. They're not going to realize it. Trust me. People in their 30s have no clue how any of this stuff works. They don't even know what retirement is. They don't even know. They have no clue how any of this all works. It's like the puzzle pieces aren't even on the table that they sit at. They have no clue. No clue how this stuff's. But I can assure you the people in their 30s will sabotage your retirement. And I don't say that because they're planning it. They don't even know. They don't even know how it works. Like they just, they just, they just have crappy lives because they can't get good paying jobs. And it's just, you know, that's that's what it is. So you know, just just remember, we can blame the 18 year olds who couldn't read a, a contract loan or you can kind of man up a little and blame the 16, 70 year olds. Honestly, the 16, 70 year olds at this point, they can't fix what they screwed up. Think about it. When you go back in time, who was voting for the politicians in the 80s and 90s? That's your 60, your 70, your 80 year olds. Those were the people in the 80s and 90s who were, who were heavy laying in their votes. OK. Now, these 60, 70, 80 year olds, they can't fix what they did. They messed it up major. They screwed up so big. Okay. And I know people don't want to hear that, but it's it's just the truth. If we're just if we're just relaxed about it, if we just go, okay, where did the problem start with this whole cluster bleep of you know young people not being able to innovate to make better jobs, to make America make more money, to pay for retirement with the Ponzi scheme? Like that's that's where this whole thing. Ah, 499 donation. Thank you from Shirley. Thank you, thank you. Uh, very cool. Love the little happy pair. Um, so the the <laughs> I love the statement there. Um, Schwinn Scrambler. I'm almost 16. I don't know how this stuff works. And that's okay. That's that's like that's but I think that's part of the point with this is that there's no social security classes in school. There were no social security law classes in law school. There were no social security classes on financial preparedness in my master's. There was no social security classes as to like what the hell even exists in this whole thing, right? In college, it didn't exist. Ain't nobody know what's going Look at, you know, like I study it. So yeah, I, I know what it is, you know, and I see the red blinking lights. You know, you, you think I wanted to buy that house next door because I was, I was like comfortable and happy. No, I'm, I'm terrified. I am effing terrified about my future in this world and what's going to happen. I am terrified. Okay. I, I like, yeah, I'm terrified. Um, April Galton. Thank you. I actually will. I actually will go later tomorrow to buy more doggy bones. Sweetie had three dinners tonight. She started with her steak, which I, I, I buy the, the, the Chuck steak at Walmart, which grills up. Well, because you just have to cut a lot of fat off. It's cheap though. And then she had uh, basically some cheese um, because she wouldn't, be quiet. And then she had, um, they're like these treats at Walmart that have like three meats on them on like a little stick. And yeah, she had two of those and, uh, and she's outside right now, literally, uh, in the pool on the first step, just sitting there having a good time. So I just, I just wanted to let you know, um, the, the way it works here, the way it works here is that sweetie, 
my female dog, the 100% bully, lives in a world where she's a Disney princess. And I am her sidekick pet that is just part of her life that takes care of stuff for her. That's how it is. That's just what it is. All right, so here we go. So basically, you can, with these millennials, these 30 year olds, you can post more like lazy memes on the internet. But if we look at like why they're so depressed and anxious and shit so bad for them, it's because like they can't achieve big things. Like no matter what, we are just losers compared to prior generations who could do more. Um, you know, it's for more reasons than just this whole like, you know, they have to pay a lot of money per month situation. But there's this uninspired, indebted video gamer who can't afford to launch their dreams. And we can blame them, but that's like blaming like the, the 10 years into, you know, drugs, you know, hardcore drug user. Like you're going to keep blaming the hardcore drug user for stealing things and trying to buy drugs when their brain literally doesn't function without that drug hitting their body. Like, wh what are you going to like, oh, what are we going to do? Like, They're going to keep stealing if they if they're constantly in a scenario where they can potentially get them. This is how it works. Anyways, um. When millennials figure this out, which they only will in like the next 10 years from now, then who do you think will win when there isn't enough money? I think you guessed it. The, the Democrats will blame the Republicans and everyone who isn't on a government pension loses. That's that's the reality here. That's what's coming up. Sorry, I went a little dark on that one. My apologies. Hugs and kisses to everybody. All right. Remember, guys, that that's two presidents, right? This whole like the trust funds run low to out. That's two presidents and a half away from it falling apart. It could literally be if Biden stays in one more new face before it hits the fan. Like it could just be two presidents worth of time before the trust funds run out. That's scary. That's very scary. Again, hugs and kisses to everybody. We are approaching the months that matter for calculating the 2024 COLA being July, August, and September. So remember, 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 remember with this thing, government can pay the least to you next year if inflation is the lowest for the next three months, being July, August, and September. So if inflation is higher over the next three months, then the government has to pay you more in 2024. But if it's low, they get to pay you less. So long as those months have lower inflation because they average them. So get ready for a potential dip in inflation. And then, of course, we'll get to the holiday season and one of these gigs, okay? And we don't know if this will happen. But, you know what I mean? If they're going to play the game, that's how you'd play the game, okay? Now, it was argued to me that 2022 represented the end of the retirement golden age. When the person said that to me on the phone, my brain first disagreed with them but i honestly they made some good arguments and i want to i want to give you them because this is about the middle of 2023 and looking back on 2022 and where things are at going to the future of 2023 so with fuel prices being not super high but they're up a little right now the value of the dollar is of course rampantly down and the grocery items being higher than ever before i can't even believe how easy it is to get to $100 at walmart like you could, like back in the day, it was hard to spend a hundred dollars at Walmart. Now it's like, I, you know, I fill up like one of those little baskets with like, you know, small items and poof, I'm there. But anyways, the point is, I, I think that it now seems that the value of retirement, that retirement check every month, that Medicare check it is leaving many older faces a little worried. I know it, you know it, and I think everybody else is starting to catch up uh, and catch on to the fact that the retirement program is probably going to have to change one way or the other. The middle of 2023 is making this more clear than ever. So, and I, and I guess the, the, the thing that I would say about this is when it comes down to people uh, essentially in the modern day, the retirement check in 2022, you know, it, we had that massive, we had, look, we had the five percentage, then we had the eight percent, 8.7 percent inflation. What happened was all of a sudden, that, that idea of heaven at the end of a long life of working, it, 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 it had the golden gates were like, I don't know, copper. They were like, I mean, copper's nice. Copper's nice, but they're not golden. They're not sparkly. They're like copper. You know, it's just it, it, it devalued. You know what I mean? The, the whole program devalued it. And 
as a result of that, the problem is now, how do we convince people to want to work hard, to want to pay FICA taxes when the benefits don't mean that much at the end of it, right? That's the, that's the tough thing. I think the Social Security Administration is trying to figure out how to answer of how do we give value back to this program so people will want to invest into their future by using the government to secure it, okay? Interesting thing, an Indiana 30-year-old woman named Bree Williams was arrested by uh, police troopers, or well, I guess they would be, uh, whatchamacallit, they were uh, state troopers in Plainfield, who allegedly, uh, uh, she allegedly possessed the following stolen items, okay? Just, just think about the numbers of these items. Nine social security cards. These are, this is what she had on her. 14 identification cards belonging to various individuals. 46 checks slash direct deposit forms. Counterfeit money, tax documents belonging to various people, mail addressed to several different people, notebooks containing bank account information, and PIN numbers. So just remember, like, if you think that, you know, you, you, you're you kind of, they're catching up on all these people that are, you know, you know, abusing the system. There's a lot of them out there. And they all use different tactics. Some use digital tactics. Some use, you know, physical tactics where they'll strong arm somebody. You know, they've had literally reports where, you know, a group of drug dealers will lock disabled people in a basement and then they'll just every month take their check. And it's it's horrific. It's like a Hollywood film of scariness, but it's reality. Now, this all sounds bad, but if we take a moment and we walk up the stairs of what's going on, and if you join me above, right, all of what's going on and we kind of look down, what's happening is the SSA is changing. Now, the commissioner is facing, right, the, commercial, the current commissioner, Commissioner Kijikazi, is facing the most uh, half-breed. Thank you. Thank you for the dollar nine, nine donation. Um, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I'll make sure that I get uh, Sweetie some treats. She actually, she just came in right now. So you may hear her barking and, and waffling and being a little snuggle, snuggle pup. All right. So with that said, she smells like chlorine. She's been in the pool a lot. So with that said, okay, the commissioner right now is facing higher, larger, bigger, more difficult, more extreme problems than any commissioner has ever, fa has ever faced before them. So when people talk and say, well, she didn't do this or she could do this, I sit back and I say to myself, where are the problems at? We have a lot of problems or a little bit of problems. We have a massive amount of problems. How difficult are these problems to fix? The most difficult problems that have ever existed for the Social Security Administration are happening right now. And she is fixing them. So I'm happy because she is plowing through the problems as they come up. But with that said, I mean, the SSA is facing just these ridiculous odds and problems that have never been faced before. I couldn't find a commissioner that faced even more difficult issues than this SSA has. And I mean, remember, lurking, lurking over the horizon is this whole trust fund problem on top of it. And that's not even part of the list that's like going on right now. So I got to say, I think she's doing a very good job. I've been very happy with how she's been pushing forward and keeping the ball rolling and trying to fix things. Because remember, during the Commissioner Saul era, it was just all pro-SSA, pro-SSA, pro-SSA rule and, you know, rule changes. Whereas now we're seeing things where other sides are starting to get the benefit boost, the changes that they need, which is a really good thing. Now, I do believe that America is transitioning into a more European lifestyle, which means you won't be able to buy as much. You know, you go to Europe and things are just more expensive. You know, you're not buying a gallon, you're buying a liter and the liter is more expensive, right? So the point is, I think we are transitioning into that. And the model that we had post-World War II, because remember, America as a country was never physically attacked on its homeland. So we didn't have destroyed buildings, destroyed airfields. We didn't have any of that stuff. So we had this massive advantage, which we've now kind of you know, not lost. It's just, we're now, we're not, we're not the big kid on the block and the only big kid on the block. We're big kid on the block, but now there's other big kids too on the block. Okay. Now people will obviously adapt, but and I think this, oh, thank you, Shirley for the, for the 99 cent donation. I really appreciate it. That's the third one from Shirley. Very, very cool. Thank you. Thank you. So I think what will happen is that people will be fine. But you'll be seeing over the next 10 years, a lot of the elderly downsizing. Now, a lot of the elderly always 
have downsized. You had a couple of different types of elderly people, right? That were retired. You had those who were like, cool, I'm retiring. I'm going to add more to my house and make it even bigger, right? They never get their money out of that deal. They never get their money out of the deal. Then you have people who are like, you know, we, all the kids are out of the house. We're retired now. I think we're going to move to the water. We'll get a small little thing and we'll be fine. Very common. You have those who will live in the same spot. They won't change a thing. And then of course you have those who basically have lived on a farm and they're not going to change. It's not going to change. It's just going to be what it is until some developer comes in and offers their kids money and their, their kids are going to take the money, right? That's, that's the progression. Unless they're me and they decide to go on a two-year romp to restore a family farm. That, yay. That was so much fun. I'm so, look at all that way here. Look at all that way here. All right, let's keep rolling through this. I guess what I would say is this. It is important to realize the trajectory of where social security benefits are going. Uh, super thank you to uh, uh, Teofilo uh, Munoz Ham. Very cool. Um, thank you included with question mark. Uh, help me out with that one. Help me out with that one. Looks like you got a Hulk thingy there. That's very cool. I'm a huge like I'm a huge uh, MCU fan. Um, okay, so uh, with that said, I think if we all just understand the trajectory of what's happening, like a big picture with the Social Security Administration, Social Security benefits. What's happening is that they have to find a way for the money you pay in to have a better return on investment because it's just not returning enough money right now. When we give it to the government, they get this preferential loan, they convert it to bonds, and ultimately it doesn't work. It's just not enough money that's growing off of what you, know, you put into their government bonds. The government bonds just aren't performing well enough. Okay. Another thing that has to happen is we have to find a way to get these kids to innovate the future. I'm not talking full Silicon Valley level here. I'm not talking about that. That's a once in a history book, whatever thing. But we do need future innovations for these kids. We need these kids to be inspired. We need these kids to do incredible things. Uh, Marjan, thank you. Thank you for the uh, Don 99 donation. Um, so, I mean, Marjan, do you mean the $200 increase in the sense of a cola boost? Because, you know, you'll probably see a cola boost that's, you know, not as much as that, but close to that. But no, I don't I don't foresee a $200 each month increase, which is what some of these other channels are putting out. It's just not going to pass. It's not going to pass. Remember, 2024 uh, 20, represents the uh, runway, if you will, to taking off to becoming president. The number one conversation that will be at all of these uh, discussions, right? Well, although, although let's be honest here, Biden's not going to be doing any of those. And the Republicans are going to be cutting each other off at the ankles. But the point is, every single oh, oh, you mean the 200 that Biden promised? No, no, that's that's not going to happen. That's definitely not going to happen. No, no, I, I honestly, I didn't even think you meant that. But no, that's that's not going to happen. So here's the deal: um, you have Democrats, right, with the idea of keep Social Security benefits the same. Let's try and fix it. You have Republicans who are like, let's. Let's be realistic about this. Let's cut this. Let's cut that. Let's raise the age. Let's do this. Uh, I think we can all agree that, oh, wow. Uh, Annabelle Wynn, thank you. Thank you for the $20 donation. I super appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. I think it is ironic that Republicans have a tendency to attack the age because they're like, look, people are living longer. We can't pay as much, yada, yada. And another thing that they don't talk about, another thing that they don't talk about that is very, very important is that the amount of people accessing other benefits, widow's benefits, survivor's benefits, child benefits, disabled little child benefits, those types of auxiliary programs has massively increased. So the program for a very long time lived in this like take a lot of money but not give a lot out to the other people in that person's, in that tax paying person's life. So it had this little like twilight zone where it got to collect a lot of money, but not pay to the other family members who could potentially attach to it because they just didn't know what was there. Now, what's interesting about this whole thing is that Republicans don't usually talk about that. Republicans are usually about raising the age, lowering the amount, stuff like that. So Republicans tend to look very bad. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Crafting with cats, Tammy. Very cool. Thank you for the doggy donations. Absolutely. Very cool. Sweetie is now right over there. 
Uh, I think she's chewing on, I'm not sure. She's chewing on something. It looks like a, uh, it looks like a dead toy. She, she goes and nibbles the button eyes out of them first. And then she opens them very gently and then pulls out the fluff and shakes it all over the place. I get to clean it up because, you know, that's my job. So what, what we're seeing is a bad Republican uh, advertisement, right? Because you're not going to get people who are retired to vote for you if, you if you're talking about making their benefits less, you know, less in the overall. And then you have Democrats on the other side using that as a wedging leverage point, right? And what the Democrats are doing is they're saying, look, we want to keep it the same. Here's the truth, okay? In order to keep benefits going in the right direction, you have to change how people look at some of these programs. Disability benefits. A lot of disabled people can and want to work an hour or two a week, maybe even a little bit more. And the truth is, for SSDI benefits, we we let them do that under the nine month trial, uh, the nine month uh, work uh, trial work period with the extended eligibility, thirty six month period, or the ticket to work. We we allow them to do that. But under the SSI program, there are far fewer programs. Now, the SSI program is a lot of people. It's a lot, a lot of people. It's millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people. And the point here is that SSI people are so restricted that they can't achieve. Okay, so I, let me explain. Millennials with their student loans are like SSI people. Neither can achieve a better existence because they're too restricted. And so the problem is we have to look at SSI in a very different light. And I don't think Republicans are willing to do that. And I don't think Democrats are willing to discuss change. So we're in this like, it's not going to get better thing. We're in this like, if anybody touches it, it's going to make it crack and crumble and die. But the truth is we have to touch it. We have to look at it and say, how can we change this to be better for the people so that they want to have more, want to achieve more, et cetera. Um, till uh, Colhane, very cool. Uh, let's see, two dollar donation. He asked me a very tough question Do you think Trump has a chance in 2024? Okay, so I tend to stay away from uh Trump questions because those videos tend to get demonetized. But I will say this, um, with Trump, Trump has never been a normal Republican. Some would say he's been a weirdo when it comes to Republican ideas. And then people call the other Republicans re Republicans in name only. No, those are the real Republicans. Those are the real Bush Republicans. Those are the real first Bush Republicans, second Bush Republicans, you know, the, the Dick Cheney. Those are the real Republicans. Trump wasn't one of those. He was like this weird hybrid of what was cool for what a lot of Republicans wanted and a lot of middle people wanted and some Democrats wanted. So Trump was more instead of here or here, he was more right here. And so what happened to him was he became hyper popular out of friggin nowhere. He became a superstar out of friggin nowhere. Um, some of the stuff, ironically, and his popularity and, fa and fame, when you look at the charts of the numbers, were similar to the Nixon era with Nixon. So, and even some to Kennedy as well, but all different leaders, very different leaders. It still blows my mind that Nixon passed SSI because I just didn't, I just, it's hard for me to, to take that man and that program and do this. It's just hard for me to see that. But the point is, Trump is facing all these criminal charges. He's also literally very high in the polls. He's also stated that he would not touch Social Security benefits, or as put another way, you know, basically the benefits that people should and, you know, have paid into stuff like that. So if he were to be the number one for the Republican side, the Democrats wouldn't be able to use their leverage, which is their strongest leverage to say that Republicans want to take away your benefits or reduce your benefits. They wouldn't be able to use that effectively. So I think that's a, that's a thing that's going to help him if he's, if he gets put into that position. Although it seems like you know, the federal government is just leaning on him and filing criminal charges against him anyway, which way. I mean, look, let's be honest here, okay? I don't know a single president that there wasn't some sort of uh, issues with their marriage that equated to some playing outside the marriage, okay? I don't know a single president that where there wasn't 
at least a rumor where literally to some degree photos. I mean, look at Kennedy, look at Kennedy and the photos they got on him that popped up. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, I don't know a president who hasn't done that. Does that mean that that person is a bad person? Well, we expect the president, whether female or male, to be in this like perfect American, you know, box, right? This perfect American, like married, happy wife, happy children, or married, happy husband, happy children. We expect this perfect human, but let's not BS each other. To get into that position, to be in that position, you have to basically screw over your family and screw over your spouse because you have to work nonstop. And then you have to put your kids through hell with all the campaigning BS and your wife or your husband, you never see them uh, other than them being on the stage, listening to another one of your crappy speeches. So, I mean, I get it. I, that's all I can say is I get it. You know, like if somebody said to me, Biden was doing that stuff with, you know, a, a marriage problem, you know, I'd be like, honestly, the first thing in my head would be like, wow, at that age. Wow. Cause you know, at that age, guys, we slow down a little bit, you know, it's just it's how it works, you know? But the first thing that happened in my head, I'd be like, damn, wow, huh, okay, all right, you know, people are getting older, and they're, they're getting more time in the saddle, you know? So the, the point is, I would be impressed in that regard. But still, I would ethically and morally feel a little bit, you know, pulled, because that's, that's not what we expect from a president. We expect that person to not be perfect, but, you know, to get the A grades, you know, to, to, to be able to check mark off like, hey, I want this product. You know, when you like compare products, right? You're like, okay, this one's got the bigger motor. This one's got the bigger fan. This one's got the bigger output. This one's got the, the, the more efficient blah, blah, blah. This one's got the, you know, cool color I like. You know, we expect that president to have more check boxes of what we want to buy. But, and this is a big, big, big but. Okay, this is a big but. We are misled every election because the people that we vote for are literally the face of something, a product that is not actually what we are getting. Every election. Think about this. Think about this. Can we hold the president to the standard of Kris Kringle, Santa Claus's face on a toy box? And we could say, yes, Santa Claus, that's the one. And, and Mrs. Claus, the perfect presidential. Look at those toys. Look at those happy children. That's unreasonable. It's unreasonable to expect these people who spend their days and nights living in mass anxiety, massive lawsuits, massive depression. It is un acceptable and unreasonable to expect these people to be perfect. My life is crap. My life is literally 24 seven work. I was literally late an hour today because I couldn't say it's 10 o'clock already. And we haven't even gotten to the part where I take phone calls. The point is, and I got to get off of this. The point is, I'm going to put the script aside. The point is with this, uh, and I'm sorry I took so much time on that question. Uh, Dollar 99 from Shirley. Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler. Sorry. And, and again, um, uh, 499 for, for Shirley. Again, she said, don't, uh, go ahead and share on Facebook. I really appreciate that. And Derek Park Sr., thank you, thank you for the $5 donation with the little lemon and the little uh, togepi, uh, which we call it, little uh, lime there, which is very cool. I actually love key lime pie. I used to never know what it was until I came to Florida and then I got fat on it. So with that saying, uh, I would like to say I thank you guys for all the questions. Uh, my answer to will I think Trump have a, a shot for the 2025 being the president. Um, the dude seems to do exceptionally well with rebounds. And I don't mean that in a wife sense. I don't mean that in a business sense. Because I mean, he's had some failures. He's had some lawsuits. He's had some, <laughs> he's had some criminal charges. But the dude does seem to rebound. You know what I mean? Like when I, when I try and do stuff, I don't ever rebound that well. You know what I mean? Like if I stub my toe, I never, you know what I mean? I never, I never get back up to running speed in that little a time. So the dude does rebound that well, but at the same time, he'll probably be going against, you know, Biden. Biden, Biden has the support of many of the agencies in the federal government. 
He has the support of uh, the, the, the poor population, which is a lot of votes, and they're getting out there to vote. Um, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. People like to sell it as like the poor versus the capitalism. And um, I don't think that's reality at this point. I think I think it's more of like uh, a selling of uh, people who want this like perfect world versus which is the Democrats. They want this like perfect. Everybody gets along. Everything's cool versus the people who realize that there are other entities out there. Like it's a wild world out there that are trying to eat Americans and they need to be prepared to fight these terrible, horrible forces. You know, look, I don't know if you saw, but China recently, you know, tried to ram their ship into our ship over there, you know, in the, in the South China Sea area. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you're aware, but there have been many reports of uh, Russian jets and Chinese jets intercepting our planes. I, I guess I guess the point that I'd like to say to you is this. All right. Imagine. All right. All right. This is the last thing. And then we're and then we're moving on to the next video. The last thing. OK, the last thing. Imagine you on an island. I know. I know you're like, oh, there's mosquitoes and the sand and I hate sand, but I like Star Wars. I know. I got it. You're on an island and you own this island. Now, there are other land masses out there, and those other land masses, right, can come with their force. They're big guns, they're big war machines, and they can take your island and get rid of you. So what do you do? You start to build up a population, and you start to train that population to defend the motherland known as the island. And then what happens is, right, you start to buy more and more war machines so that people won't hurt you. And then at some point, a little bit of Einstein gets in there. You create a super mega bomb, right? The, 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 you know, the nuclear bomb that turns into the hydrogen bomb that turns into the whatever bomb. So you do that, right? And now you're like, hey, anybody touches this island, I press the button. Button means no bueno for y'all, right? That's, that's what you do. And when you do that, you essentially have created your defense bubble. This is like you having a shield around your island because nobody would be crazy enough to try and hurt you because you would launch the missiles. But the, the reality is, the re oh, there's sweetie. The reality of this situation is that a lot of Americans don't understand how scary it is out there. They don't understand that it wouldn't take much to reshift, right? Who owns what? Who's in power? It wouldn't take much to wipe out enough American military forces for other countries to have an advantage over us and NATO. So the point is, I mean, think about it. If they were to go ahead and set off a nuclear bomb at, let's say, you know, three of our best military spots where we had the most gear, right? And then they had satellites that had the capacity to shoot lasers that would shoot down anything we shot at them. Right, whether it came from some submarine, whether it came from land base, whether it was you know our bases in other countries, what if they did that? Right, it's plausible, it's 100% plausible that we would not be able to defend as well. Okay, let me give, let me give you another example. How much coastline do we have? We have a lot of coastline. Well, we have a unique thing as America. We have Canada above us, which let's just be honest here. Canada, Canada is not going to try and invade America. Okay. That's just, that's just, they're, they're the 10 ply. Okay. We're, we're, we're the, we're the 16 ply. Mexico again, again, is not going to invade America. They're just not Cuba. Again, it's just not going to invade America, but Russia, Russia's got a lot of people that might invade them, right? A lot of people, Ukraine's starting to invade them. China, there's a lot of people that would never dare to invade them, but they potentially could. Like they have land that connects. They could do it. So because America is in this like really cool little niche spot, this like, you know, we were protected. Like, like if you were to fight a war game, right? And you were like, okay, where would I want to place a country that, that has the right temperament for growing a lot of the foods that we like to eat? And then it's, it's separated from other scary nations that would want to hurt us. You would choose America. And people don't talk about that, but like America, if you like play like red alert war game where you like have all your little buildings and all your little tanks and all your little people, like America is the perfect little spot. It's connected, but it's also disconnected from the scary people. So as a result of that, as a country, 
we have this great hometown advantage. Our field is kick-ass. But at the same time, the, the problem is, to be fair, we got a lot of coastline. And we have a really big border. And our border is not super-duper secure. And it only takes a small amount of money and a small amount of knowledge and a small amount of very devoted people to go ahead and do terrible things to any country. But I mean, look, you saw 9-11, you know, they, they did that with hardly any money. I mean, look, if I tried to plan something horrific, right, I would have needed way more money to make anything bad happen. And I wouldn't want that. Like I'm one of those idiots that sits in the corner. And it's just like, I just hope everybody gets along. But I know that that's not reality. So I get where these Republicans that are pumping freedom through their veins come from. I get it. You know, and I, I had a claimant where I was sitting there talking with uh, two days ago about, the, you know, the Democratic Party who basically did, you know, they knock on doors and say, hey, would you like to blah, 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 blah. They, it's a different mentality. It's a mentality that everybody is trying to get along. And I think that in America, we should shoot for that. But we have to prepare for these other cultural differences that want to literally eat the biscuit of America. And uh, anyway, so I'm getting I'm getting text messages that we got to go to the next video. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me tonight. The next video, you get to call in and bitch me out for spending way too much time on this video. I am awake now because I've been chugging a couple of these. Um, and uh, caffeine is a wonderful, terrible thing. I will see you guys, however, at the next video where I'll answer questions live through this phone. Please remember to like, subscribe, leave reviews. I prefer the five stars. The way you do is you go to Google. You type in Disability Resolution Law Firm or Disability Resolution Florida. The little review thing usually pops up on the right. I will catch you a little bit later. Have a wonderful night. And thank you to all the people who donated. You, you, you really are helping me out, which I appreciate because uh, tomorrow they have to rebuild the darn AC system in that house over there. I'm going to show you pictures in the videos of how bad it was. But if you can imagine a haunted house, right, that's what the inside of the AC unit looks like. I think it has ghosts. I will catch you later. Have a wonderful night. 10 minutes. Give me 10 minutes to recover and feed sweetie because she's literally, she's passed out behind me. But the moment I click this button, she's going to get up, start barking at me and expect some cheese. I will catch you guys in a little bit. 10 minutes plus this one. And I'll see you there. All right, guys. I'll catch you later. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye.